Guys, come on in. There's so many of you. I'm just going to take a little bit of time to let everyone in because they're all popping in. We are not recording this tonight, even though it does say recording. We are not going to share the replay just because we're going to talk about some things that may be a little bit non compliant. Come on in. Come on in. So I'm going to just. Uh, in these five minutes, I'm going to, so three more minutes, I'm going to let everyone in. So go ahead and grab some paper, your journal, pencil, your oils, your ningxia, or your tea, whatever you're going to settle in for, for the evening. Come on in. So glad to have you guys here. You know what, um, Denise, a printout. Oh man, I didn't do a Google form tonight. I will post it in the event. I will do that. Um, I will post, I'll post the slideshow because that's what I'm gonna do tonight. All right, let's do that. I, um, I knew I needed to do that today, but it was crazy today. Right. If everyone can make sure they are on mute, that would be great. I'm just going to do two more minutes. So in those two minutes, you can tell us what oils you're putting on. Um, grab a notebook, grab some tea, come on in. I'm going to put some clarity and white angelica on. We're going to talk about breast health tonight. Gosh, Facebook was down today, right, y'all? Like, I was trying to send you all the links, and I'm going crazy. And I messaged Sarah Paula. I was like, "Is there, um, like, what's going on? I can't get on Instagram. I can't get on Facebook. What is going on?" So, guys, social media is a love hate relationship. So, um, I'm going to put my email here again because if you need to contact me. Um, email, um, I don't know, get each other's phone numbers. Um, what else can we do? I'm on project broadcast, but there's all the things, I don't know, like we are so used to Facebook and Instagram and our social media apps to communicate with each other. But what about like, um, just getting each other's phone numbers, old school email, right? Like crazy stuff. All right, let me just close this door real quick. Did I need something in here? Let me get the space board to go on the fire. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to share my screen with you. Not if you can see this. You guys see this? Okay, great. I see Lori and Angela and Kim. Awesome. Okay. So a few more people. Let me just make sure they're getting in here. Okay, so tonight we're gonna talk about breast. Um, ooh, I went a little too fast. Um, breast 
health, okay? Breast health. And so October is the month of breast cancer awareness. But I want to take that and I want you ladies to think about um, breast health awareness. I want you to think about, okay, this time comes up every, every year. Um, are you doing the things that need to be done to care for your breast tissue? Um, if you have if you are a breast cancer survivor, if you have had breast cancer, if you had, if you've known people, like my heart goes out to you. Um, we're going to talk about these things tonight, and I just want you to know, like, so number two, keep an open mind, because um, cancer is a preventable disease, which we're going to get into. Um, and, but you know what, these are the things that we did not know growing up in our generation. We didn't know some of these things. So keep an open mind, um, as we go about this. I know this is a very sensitive subject, um, because many of you, every single one of you, including myself have been affected by cancer in some way. Tonight, we're gonna to be talking about breast cancer um, or breast tissue. So what is said tonight will not be recorded. We are trying something different in this, um, in this Monday night group. We are trying something that I really, I don't know. I want you guys to know the power of these oils. I want you to know what these oils do. I want you to know truth and, and truth gets censored truth gets taken down. And, um, and so just for the month of October, I want live viewers. I want you guys to hear truth, know truth, and be able to share this with friends in a setting. So number one, um, in a setting that is like a private conversation, or maybe a zoom, if you have people that you know, that are in other States, um, that you can feel free to like zoom your friends and tell them this stuff. Um, have people over for coffee or tea, tell them these things because social media is awesome in one way and the other way things get censored. Um, and we all love our oils. We love natural wellness in not just oils, but in any realm. Um, today when social media went down, I don't know if you all saw that, but the whistleblower that worked for Facebook, I was praying for her. I fell for her because she is a brave woman, um, to speak out and to speak out going against the grain of, um, you know, what they want us to hear, see, listen, all those things that is being brave. And so, um, I want you to know truth. And so if you take what we have, what we share tonight and share it with friends um, that are open to listen in a private conversation. So these are things we don't share on social media. Okay. Because that is called non-compliancy and we love our oils and we want to keep them. Mary Young spoke highly of that at gold retreat. Like we don't share the non-compliant things on social media. We do that behind closed doors because we love our oils and we can have them taken away in an instant. And uh, we know that our oils and our supplements are powerful and they can do incredible things. Um, and the more you're doing this and the more you're into it, you know that they are incredibly powerful. So um, keep an open mind. I think everyone's mute, uh, mic is mute, muted. So feel free to use the chat feature. I'll go back through and um, answer any questions as we go along. So thank you all for being here tonight. So topics for discussion tonight, we're gonna understand the cancer culture. We're gonna understand estrogen and food being our medicine, the emotion of cancer. That is probably like the number one thing. If you write anything down, the emotion of cancer. So take some screenshots. Um, and then self-care is preventative care. We think as women that self-care is selfish. It is not, it is preventative care. And we need to take time for ourselves. So I'll talk about some things that you can do to take some time for yourself for preventative care every single day. Hello, hello. <laughs> My name is Sarah Stutzman, and I am a certified holistic health coach through the Institute of Integrative Nutrition. I got my certification about five years ago. I don't even know. I don't keep track of time because every day is a beautiful adventure, and I don't want to have to keep track of time. <laughs> I don't wear a watch. Like, I just don't. 
Um, I just love to live life to the fullest, but I was an elementary ed teacher um, and my dream, my dream was to stay home and be a stay home mom. But um, I love, I love wellness. I love nutrition. I love homesteading. I love how everything just fits together like a beautiful puzzle piece. And friends were asking us what we were doing. And so I just felt like I wanted to learn a little bit more about nutrition. And so I did an online program while my, my two younger ones were little um, and became a holistic health coach. So love to guide you guys in not just oils, but wellness in general. Like we're going to dive into that because it's not just about food. It's not just about our emotions. Everything is connected. I'm a wife, mother of three girls and an advocate for truth. Okay. So let's talk about the cancer culture. So, um, these statistics were taken from like PubMed and, um, highly, um, highly read journals. So you can do your own research. I advocate for you guys to do your own research, but cancer is the second leading cause of death in the United States. It is one of the modern medicine's greatest challenges. It is increased over the past 15 years. Men have a higher chance of developing cancer than women. I do believe that um, that is, and, and this is my opinion, but men are in contact with more carcinogens, heavy like toxins in a lot of their workplaces and also stress too. Um, women, on the other hand, are also um, introduced to a lot of chemicals too. If you are a woman that works from home or if you are a stay-at-home mother and you are in the home a lot, I'm a stay-at-home mom. I work from home. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I homeschool. And there are days where I'm like, gosh, I didn't even get out on my homestead. I am indoors all day teaching, um, making food, cleaning. And I have the ability to go outside whenever I want to. And I find myself indoors more than normal. And so when we're indoors more than normal, we are, and we're using traditional cleaning products, um, beauty products, um, plugins, sprays, um, candles, all those things. We're breathing those things in. And if you work in an office, you may be coming into contact with those things as well, men and women. Um, and so I want you to think about your environment that you're in, because we are in a cancer culture where we know at least one person that has had cancer, um, of some kind or another, or maybe yourself, you have had um, cancer or maybe you're going through that right now, but um, it is estimated that there will be around 1.8 million new cases of cancer um, and some 600, I can't even say this, I am practicing all these like <laughs> um, place values with my daughter, <laughs> 606,500 deaths attributed to cancer in the United States in, um, it was in 2020, we're in 2021 now. So what is that gonna be now? And in our, in 2022, um, research suggests that only 5% of cancers are hereditary. Let that sink in. Only 5% are hereditary, okay? <sighs> so that means all the other cancers that we're coming in contact, like that people are, are, are getting, are non-inherited. They're all lifestyle choices that we make. And they're not, and they're foods that we eat and our physical activity levels, our stress levels, um, all affect our cancer risk. Um, and I bring this up because we're talking about breast health, but it has to do with cancer, right? A lot of it has to do with cancer. Um, and the, the choices that we make, um, the inflammation that, and, and I know I did, um, a Zoom, was that last month? I forget, I don't know, oh, time flies. Two months ago about inflammation and inflammation is the root cause of so many diseases in our body. When we have um, 
acute inflammation that has gone systemic into chronic inflammation. Um, our body can't handle that amount of inflammation. Inflammation is a good thing, but when we have it at such a um, like high level, it creates dis-ease in our body. And so that could also be the root cause of cancers in our body. So um, lifestyle choices that we make. And no one says, no one tells us this stuff. We go to the store and we buy things off the shelf. We buy food off the shelf. We buy cleaning products, beauty care products. And we think that they're safe but all of those things have a direct impact on our physical body. And so we're gonna get into that a little bit tonight, okay? Let me make sure I got everything. Okay, yes. Um, so 60 to 70%, oh no, what am I doing here? <laughs> oh, stop it getting all these pop-ups. There we go. Okay. 60. No. <laughs> okay. 60 to 70% um, cancer related deaths are attributed to diet, tobacco, and I'm going to add alcohol into that as well. So, and that comes from PubMed and some other, um, I, I got these from other journal articles. So Let's keep going here. Let's understand estrogen because we have to understand estrogen as women to understand um, our breast tissue health, mostly estrogen. It could be progesterone too, but it's mostly estrogen. There's three types of estro estrogen that our body creates as a female. One of them is estrone and that's made primarily after menopause. It's still a strong estrogen, but not as strong as estradiol. Estradiol is our strongest estrogen, and it's most common in our childbearing years. So think about when you got your period, right? And if you are already in menopause years, think about when you went through menopause. Like you have a lot of estrogen in your body, and it's a very strong estrogen throughout most of your life, right? Estriol is our most mild estrogen, and it's present during pregnancy. Estrogen is a good thing, but when it's not in balance, it could be a bad thing. And some things that um, increase our estrogen is stress and xenoestrogens. Those are man-made chemicals that act like estrogen. Xenoestrogens are in all fragrances. Even if your product is a natural product, that it is marketed as a natural product, it will say um, natural fragrances, but then it doesn't list any of the ingredients in those natural fragrances. Um, because um, companies, those are propri proprietary ingredients to a company. And so they could have all kinds of chemicals in there. Um, I had a friend that I did a class for, like when I started, it was like six years ago and she had worked for Johnson and Johnson. And she said she did a tour of the facility, you know, as she was, you know, an employee there and they had a big vat of chemicals, right. And they added a couple drops of pure lavender oil and said it was natural, right. Because they added natural lavender to it. So you can, companies can get around all kinds of wording. So, um, Xenoestrogens are in our beauty care products. They are in our, like in plastics. They are in, um, I like think about when you get processed food, like in packages, foods in packages, they're touching, they're touching plastics. They're touching um, like paper plates. And, and I, I love paper plates, oh my word, <laughs> because we don't have a dishwasher, but paper plates have plastics in them. There are xenoestrogens in so many things. So I want you to think outside the box when you're thinking, I do so many things that are natural, but I'm still having some breast tenderness or I'm having some issues. Um, dive deep into where those xenoestrogens could be. Um, glyphosate in our water. Um, glyphosate, if you're, you know, even if you try to eat as organic as possible. I'm sure we all eat non-organic things too. So pesticides, herbicides, there's glyphosates in all of those, those Roundup Ready chemicals. Um, that being said, let food be thy medicine, right? Um, let's talk about some preventative things that you can do to support your hormones to support 
your um, estrogen levels, cruciferous vegetables, we're in fall, right? And you go to farm stands, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kale, Brussels sprouts, all those things are so present right now. Eat them up, but make sure they're cooked because cruciferous vegetables are also goitrogenic. That means that when you're eating them raw, um, they have goitrogens in them, which could affect your thyroid. And when you're affecting your thyroid, you're affecting your hormone system, right? So make sure that you steam them. Even kale, I know like kale salad was a big thing a couple years ago. Steam your kale, right? Um, kale is a good thing, but you don't have to be eating gobs of it. Broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, like eating, just eating it on a regular basis. That it has something called sulforaphane in it. It's a compound that binds to estrogen and xenoestrogens. So if your body can't, if your body can't get rid of estrogen, if your liver needs some extra support, um, eating broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kale, those things um, will help bind to extra estrogen and help release it from your system through your urine and your stool as well as xenoestrogens. So we wanna make sure that our liver is really healthy, right? Um, and that just goes back to diet, right? Making sure you're getting minerals, um, vitamins that you need, um, antioxidants that you need in order for your body to detox. If your body can't detox the extra estrogen that you don't use, it's going to get thrown back into your system. And that's when we can become estrogen dominant um, and then put xenoestrogens estrogens on top of it, um, your body is bogged down. So just having a healthy diet, um, making sure that you are going to the bathroom, pooing two to three times a day and eliminating is very, very important. Um, drinking lots of water so that you're urinating, sweating, whether it's through a sauna or exercising, sweating out those extra um, estrogens through your skin. Citrus fruits have something called D-limonene in them. And if you are an oiler, you know in the comments what oils have D-limonene in them. <laughs> What oils? I can't see the chat, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say that you guys are super super smart, and you know what oils have D limonene in them. Lemon, right? Did someone put lemon? Lime, citrus, fresh orange, bergamot, all the citrus oils, right? But mostly like lemon, right? Lemon and lime. They detoxify estrogen. And so when you put some lemon vitality into your water or you put lemon on your feet or you put it in a capsule, you are helping your body detoxify from estrogen. Okay. Because what it does, it helps clean off receptor sites. All those citrus fruits are incredible at just coming along because I want you to think about if you've ever cleaned with lemon and you use lemon to get like a sticker off of a picture frame, you go to Michael's and you get a picture frame and it, they put the sticker right on the, you know, the glass, right? And you're like, why do they do that? And you get lemon and you put lemon on it and it takes that gunk right off. Guess what? It does that to our body and it does that on our, on our receptor sites, on all of our cells. It kind of clean, it comes in, it cleans off that gunk, right? And it allows like our natural estrogen and progesterone to, um, you know, grab hold of those, those, um, receptor sites and enter the cell. Um, and then think about all the other hormones and anything that needs to enter cells like those, those, those cells are clean, right? Those receptor sites are clean. And so that's why it's really important to be adding, you know, citrus fresh or any citrus oils to our water to help our body detoxify. So citrus fruits as well, you know, um, insoluble and soluble fibers, um, apples, carrots, anything that, you know, fibrous foods, 
binds to estrogen in our small intestine and prevents estrogen from being absorbed. So instead of being absorbed back into the system through our small intestines, it, we poo it out, right? We get rid of it. So making sure we have good fiber, fibrous foods in our diet, okay? Carrots are awesome. That's why I have a picture of carrots here. Raw carrot salad, eating raw carrots helps our body um, bind to estrogen and eliminate it. It's a binding agent. Seeds and herbs, they're also estrogen binding. Okay, so sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, um, I'm thinking of some other ones. You can throw them out there. <laughs> um, uh, I have a list here. Let me get my list. I'm trying to go, go note free and then I'm like blanking. Okay, sesame seeds, flax, flax seed. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. Turmeric, rosemary, green tea are all estrogen binding. Flax seed, let's talk about flax. So there are some, some seeds that have like some estrogenic properties. When you have high estrogen in your body, um, when you have an abundance of estrogen, and you have that strong estrogen through xenoestrogens. Um, what your body does need is a mild estrogen, and that mild estrogen can come through uh, phytoestrogenic plants like um, rosemary, like um, teas, or through sesame seeds and flax seeds. They're very, they have a little bit of estrogen in them. And what happens is they can bind to the receptor sites and then those heavy estrogens can come along um, and be eliminated then. They're not gonna bind to your receptor sites and be, you know, and bog your body down. They're gonna be eliminated if those elimination pathways are clear, if this makes sense. So um, making sure, you know, you can add you know, flaxseed to your oatmeal if you want to. Um, you can use some clary sage on the inner arms of your, you know, the, the soft tissue, the soft skin on your inner arms or on your inner ankles. Um, and you'll get some mild estrogen that way. So that way those heavier estrogens can, you know, eliminate as needed. And then mushrooms. Okay, I know not everyone's a mushroom fan and I'm gonna give you a tip for this in just a second. But if you do love mushrooms, one cremini white, those simple little white mushrooms, one a day, add it to your smoothie. If you don't like the taste of it, uh, add it to your smoothie, add it to like, if you love the taste of it, I love to add it to my eggs in the morning. But one cremini mushroom a day has shown to drastically reduce the risk of breast cancer. And here's why. It's they have a compound, it's called an aromatase inhibitor. They are aromatase inhibitors and they prevent estrogen from stimulating breast tissue. So if you have any cancerous cells, we all have cancer cells, every single one of us. Um, but the thing is, it's like a loaded gun. If you, if you live a, an unhealthy lifestyle, if you eat you know, a lot of McDonald's, fast food, sugars, like all those things, that's, that's loading that gun, right? That's pulling the trigger on the gun. But if you're including things like we just talked about, and then mushrooms, you are, you're like, you're suppressing those, those cancer cells. You're, and they're not stimulating those breast tissue um, cancer cells, right? Does that make sense? So one cremini mushroom a day. That's it. I mean, you can add other mushrooms. There's reishi mushrooms, there's lion's mane, there's all kinds of medicinal mushrooms these days. And they do the same thing. So if you don't like mushrooms, you can do something like a mushroom tea. There's mushroom coffee. Um, it doesn't taste like mushrooms at all. You're just getting the benefits of those wonderful medicinal mushrooms. Okay. So the emotion of cancer, and we talked about the food, right? And this is a huge, huge part of cancer. I have a beautiful friend, her name is Rhonda Larson, and I'm gonna share her information at the end. She is a naturopath. She's also, she's a, a beautiful friend of mine, but she's also a therapist of mine. She's working, helping me work through some deep emotions. I had a beautiful childhood growing up 
Um, let me tell my kids to turn the TV down just a second. <laughs> They just found a new homesteading channel that they are loving. <laughs> so they are super excited to watch it. Um, okay, so Rhonda Larson, um, she's, I had a beautiful childhood, but I'm, I'm noticing some things popping up. Um, I'm 40 now and I'm like, oh, where do these things stem from? Our emotions are cellular. We can carry emotions from our great grandparents. They just get passed down. Emotions are cellular. They get stored at our cellular level through our limbic system, but then um, they also get stored in other areas of our body. And so the emotion of cancer, I want you to take this in. If you have to take a screenshot of this, please do. Um, but the emotion of cancer is deep hurt, longstanding resentment, keeping a deep secret, or grief eating away at self, carrying hatreds and having the attitude of what's the use, right? And, and maybe some of us through 2020 and 2021, maybe some of us have that attitude of what's the use, right? I think 2020 and 2021 really affected a lot of people, including myself. And we've had to work through a lot of things, right? Anyone else? Like just... A lot of things, and it's affected us in many different ways. Um, so I want you to lean into that and lean into some of these feelings because getting in touch with them is really important to your healing process. Now, the emotions of the breasts are a little bit similar, but in a more complex way. So we harbor as women our breasts are a place where we store emotions of mothering, nurturing, and nourishment. I want you to think about whether you are a mother or not. Our breasts were created to nurture and give nourishment to another human, right? And so when we think of our breast tissue and we think of maybe even like cancer cells or anything within that, um, the emotion to that is nurturing and nourishment, right? And so if you have problems with cysts or lumps or soreness, the emotion to that is a refusal to nourish the self. You put everyone else first, or maybe you over mother whether it's your children or the loved ones in your life, you're overprotecting and you're overbearing. So take that in. And the opposite of that are these affirmations. And these are two affirmations that you could say is that you take in and you give out nourishment in perfect balance, okay? It is okay to be giving out and giving nourishment all the time, but are you taking it in? Are you receiving it? Are you hands open receiving nourishment from other people? Um, are you receiving nourishment from yourself? And then affirmation two is I am important, I count. Oops, I, there's, a, there's a spelling error. I now care for, and, and there's another one. Oh my word, I did these so fast today. <laughs> I care for and nourish myself with love and with joy. I allow others the freedom to be who they are. I want you to say that again. I allow others the freedom to be who they are. Because as, as things, you know, we have so many people that um, they're, with, with the vaccinations, let's just, I'm just gonna bring it, right? That um, we need to allow people, if they are choosing to get the vaccine, that is their choice. If, if, if your friends and family are not choosing to get the vaccine, that is their choice. I feel like with what we're going through right now, we need to allow people to be who they are and we cannot push the agenda on anyone. 
right? And we are our own selves. We are in charge of our own selves. And so allow others to be who they are, okay? Um, maybe that's not your case. Maybe there's something else that you are dealing with with someone else that you're like, I don't know why they're doing this. I don't know why they are the way they are, right? But just let them be, right? We are all safe and free. So affirmations. You can screenshot that. Sorry for the um, sorry for the errors there. Okay, self care is preventative care. It's not selfish. Number one, you have to lower your stress. Your stress. Make time to nourish yourself, whether that's through food or taking time to maybe wake up earlier in the morning and have some um, quiet journaling time, meditation, prayer time. However, you choose to spend that time to nourish yourself and make sure you schedule it. Put yourself on the calendar. We put everyone else on the calendar except ourselves. So take time to put yourself on the calendar. So here's some preventatives and I'm gonna put links to some of these things at the end. Um, thermography scans. Let's talk a little bit about this. Let me get a drink of water because, you know. As a 36 year old woman, I was having extreme pain in my right side, in my right breast. It would shoot up all the way through my back and I felt the pain in my back of my breast, like in the back, it shut down my right arm. And I was like, what is happening? If anyone came near me within six inches, including you know my husband, if anyone tried to hug me, I was like, ouch, don't come near me. Like I was, it. when anyone came near me, it was, I was fearful that I would just be in so much pain. I was like, what is going on? During that time, I was very, very, very stressed out um, because I was pushing my business. I'm gonna say pushing it because I, was, I didn't have a good balance of home life, business, any of that. I was stressed. Um, it was also winter time. And so cold makes and anything just kind of like constrict and right. When you're cold, you just wanna like cuddle up, right? Um, and so I decided to go for a thermography scan. I thought I'm 36, right? I was in my thirties. Um, I didn't want to go for a mammogram because of the radiation. Radiation takes 18 months to dissolve from your body. And so they suggest a mammogram every year, right? So that's 12 months. So you're getting that compounded radiation. Radiation creates, um, can, can lead to more cancer cells. I'm not going to dive too much into that. You guys can do your own research. So I'm not a huge fan of, of, of mammograms. I am more into thermography scans. Thermography scans detect the health of your breast tissue. It's an infrared light and it's non-invasive. It is so, so simple. I actually took my girls and they like watched the whole thing. And I was cool with it because I have young girls and I don't care that they see this. I want them to see what we can do as preventative treatments as young women. And even if you are of the age where you can get a mammogram and it's covered by insurance, I still advocate for thermography scans because it detects the health of your breast tissue. Um, you stand in front, like you sit in front of like this camera and it's just pictures and you turn your body, they take a picture of your back, the front of your chest, the side of your chest. You can get a whole body thermography scan. If it's red, that means it's really inflamed and dense, okay? So your tissue is dense, inflamed, um, and that is not a good sign. If it's blue, that means it's, you're in the clear. White can detect cancer cells, okay? So if there's little patches of white, um, that could be cancer cells. So it can detect cancerous tissue. Um, your thermographist will send this to a, a ther thermography, um, you know, certified thermography doctor that can check it, goes over it, sends you your reports back. It's good to get a baseline. So your first one is going to be your baseline. And then after that, um, they, they look at your baseline um, test. And then they look at your second one, your third one, and then they, they judge that, you know, to see the breast, your, the health of your breast tissue um, from years past. And then they tell you what to do. They say, you need to do more 
dry brushing. Dry brushing helps move the lymph. Our lymph system is the on only system that does not have a pump. And so we need to move it through walking, through um, doing, uh, um, oh my gosh, dry brushing, or what's, oh my gosh, I'm losing my train of thought. Um, trampoline, the little trampolines, not like the big trampolines. If you have like a little rebounder trampoline, you can do that. Moving, jump roping, okay? That moves our lymphatic system. So dry brushing with a, um, like a, a dry brush, um, like a natural bristle brush, lymphatic massages, and that you can get done by a certified lymphatic massage therapist, which I'm gonna share her information at the end. The fascia blaster. How many of you have heard the fascia blaster? Um, Ashley Black, I feel like she's all over Instagram, Facebook, the internet. If you haven't looked up fascia blaster, look it up. Your fascia is this tightly woven like network of uh, fibers that, you know, hold back your fat cells, but they also trap emotions, okay? And so when emotions get trapped in there, we need to release them. So you can get a deep tissue fascia, like a, a, a deep tissue fascia massage that works on the emotional level, or you can do the fascia blaster, look it up. She has many different um, styles. I just started it and absolutely love it. I use Cell Light Magic from Young Living as I put that on my skin first because you don't want to do it on your dry skin or you're going to, it's going to hurt. So use a, a massage, you know, oil. I like the Cell Light Magic and I put that on and then I do the fascia blaster and I do it all over my body. Fascia blasting moves the lymph, moves the fat cells, um, and, and it gets through that deep tissue. Therapy, therapy to work on your emotions. Um, like I said, I'm going to share a story with you. Let me get some more water. I'm going to share a story with you. Um, that's like I don't know. You think, gosh, emotions get stored at the cell, cellular level. You can store emotions in your liver, in your stomach, like. Some of you may believe that and some of you are like probably woo woo, right? But until you go through therapy with someone that listens to you um, and you have an experience, then you're gonna understand this whole new level. Think about your fears. Once you think about your fears that you have, think about some of the pain that you have. Like, where does that pain come from, right? I was dealing with a pain on my left hip and kidney area for the longest time. Like, I would say two months. I'm like, what is going on? I have no clue what's going on. I went to the nutritionist. Um, we detected some things and we started working on it. I went to see my friend Rhonda. She works out of Lancaster. She has an office in Lancaster. Went to see her, we started working on things and she does something called muscle response testing. She, she walked me through this, these steps of some emotional release and we pinpointed it back to, I had some trauma around the age of 30. She's like, what happened at the age of 30? And I was like, well, I couldn't think of anything. I was like, I fell off a horse around 26, around that side, you know, I had a really big black and blue. And then I was like, oh, I had my daughter and it was an emergency C-section. I'll probably start crying. I said, she was stuck on my hip. She also had kidney. They thought she had like um, kidney disease. And here we found she just had kidney reflux. For some reason, it was coming up now. I was having these emotions, like I was having a hard time releasing. Um, and at the same time, my mom had a hard time with my pregnancy, with my labor. I was breech. So generationally, we had a hard time releasing our first child. Um, like I broke down in front of her office when I like made that connection and like, I don't have that hip pain anymore. Like we released that. So I want you to work on some things 
if you are having pain that you can't get rid of, if you are having fears that just keep coming up and you don't know where these fears are coming from, work through those. What does it have to do with breast tissue? Everything. Maybe it's not breast tissue. Maybe it's another tissue. Maybe it's ovarian. Maybe it's, um, you know, colon. Maybe it's stomach, liver, whatever. You, we hold emotions in certain organs. And so I want you to be in tune with that. Um, and the last thing is removal of, that should be of, not or, of root canals. Um, at the, let me leave Melanie in real quick. At the tip of every root canal um, is an infection. I have a root canal that was done when I was the age of 17. It was a fluke thing that happened and um, I have a root canal, but I'm going to tell you what, I have all on my, it's on my right side. All my issues are on my right side. Right breast always hurts. Right ovary always hurts. Okay. So at the root of every root canal is an infection. And so that lies on your meridian. And so that's a nerve point. And so that infection is traveling from that nerve point to the rest of your body. Um, that's something I want you to consider. If you have a root canal, I want you to think about that. What side is it on? Do you have pain in that side? Do you have issues on that side? Um, it's not going to be cheap to get rid of it, like to take that root canal out and you have to go with a bioidentical doctor, which I'm going to talk about. And I'll give you the, the person to go to in just a second, because these are the things that I'm considering too, but these are all preventatives, right? These are all things that you can do to help with your breast tissue, be in tune, know the health of your breast tissue and do the preventatives that are self-care preventatives, right? And so right away, it's hard. We don't see the results, right? Right away. Um, but you got to just keep doing it and trust the process and trust yourself. So some preventative wellness is obviously swap out xenoestrogens, all of your cleaners, because you can go to Target and it could say green cleaner, Mrs. Myers, right? But all those companies are bought out by big companies. Follow the money trail. Make your own cleaners. Use thieves to make cleaners or just get the thieves cleaning line, the laundry soap, the cleaner, the hand soap, um, all the things that you know are gonna be safe for your body. Savvy Minerals Makeup, um, all of the Young Living lotions. I love their CBD Beauty Boost, um, their mascaras, their blushes, and swap out candles for diffusers, right? How easy is that? So those are some easy things that you can do. Multigreens. Multigreens has all the um, like spirulina, alfalfa, all the things that are estrogen binding. I absolutely love multigreens. I take it every single day to help bind that estrogen and get rid of it. Ningxia red, antioxidants, they bind to free radicals um, and eliminate them from your body. Longevity. Longevity has high antioxidant oils in frankincense, clove, orange, and thyme. Thyme is an incredible oil to fight against cancer cells. So is frankincense. Take longevity, put it with some coconut oil and rub that all over your chest every single day. Okay. Do your dry brushing and then rub that oil. You don't want to put it on straight because it is super, super hot. <laughs> you will burn those tatas. <laughs> so put it with some coconut oil and rub it all over your chest, rub it in your armpits where those lymph nodes are um, to help for prevention. Okay, here's my resource page. So you may wanna just take a screenshot of this if you can see it all. Can you see it all? Okay. So thermography and lymphatic massage, you can get that done in Aqua Blue Wellness. That's in Leola. Your root canal removal 
get that done by a biological dentist. You don't want to just go to any dentist. You want someone that is trained in actually taking out those root canals. Um, from what I have learned from Rhonda Larson, she's, she's going through this right now, Dr. Groove in Scranton, she actually gets an entire panel of blood work done. She checks your blood work, checks her infection, checks your, you know, all your panels before she takes that root canal out. Um, you can go to New York too, if you want to, New York City, there's another doctor there, but Scranton is probably a lot closer to all of you. Research Ashley Black for fascia blaster to like really open up that fascia and release those emotions. And then Rhonda Larson, she's a naturopath. She's, a, she's just a wonderful woman. You can follow her on Instagram at Beautiful Healing Journey. Check out her website. You can make an appointment with her. She does see clients virtually or you can go into Lancaster to see her. She spends a lot of time with you and she is just... Oh my word, I can't even say enough about her. So if you're looking for some therapy or some uh, naturopathic, she, she does her own like medicines too. She makes her own tinctures and salves and all that stuff too. And then dry brushing, how to. I have a YouTube video. If you go to YouTube, you can search Love Your Lymph on YouTube. And that episode is all about how to dry brush, how to love your lymph and move your lymphatic system so that way you don't have... Um, cloggage in your lymph because when you are clogged in your armpit area that backs up into your breast and that's where you could get some sore tender breasts um, cortisol high cortisol will also do that it'll eat away breast tissue and so you want to make sure that your stress levels are down your lymph are moving um, so check that that youtube video out so thanks guys for listening you can DM me at Wellfolk Revival on Instagram or message me through email at sarahwellfolkrevival.com. I'm going to stop share and I'm going to answer any questions that you have. Okay. Ah, stomach. Let me look at this, Tracy. So I suggest y'all get this, these two books. Louise Hay, it's a really little book called Heal Your Body. That's one of them. Let me look what stomach is. There's all kinds of emotions in here. Like you would, guys, you need this. Um, stomach you um, holds nourishment and digests ideas, stomach problems. Could be dread, fear of the new, inability to assimilate the new. So think about it. When you get like that knot in your stomach. Yeah, I'll hold it up. When you get a knot in your stomach, when you're doing something new, right? It's usually because you're fearful. Um, it's called Louise Hay. You can heal your body. It's a tiny little book, right? The other one, um, very similar. It's a little bit thicker, a lot of meat to it. So you actually are gonna read through this entire book. It's called Feelings Buried Alive Never Die. Um, and within that, cancer from the of the female organs. So this could be any female organ. You could have these emotions, repressed anger, usually at male authority figures, Feelings of emptiness in your life, unresolved resentments, feelings of hostility being suppressed, rejecting the self, feelings of despair, feelings of loneliness, poor relationships with parents, um, depression, inability to cope with traumatic loss. So a lot of emotions um, wrapped up in cancer of the female organs. So this book, I'm going to, I'm going to share this one with you. It's feelings buried alive, by Carol Truman. And once we know, and we can tap into those, those emotions and connect with them and at a personal level, be like, yes, yes, I do have this, you know, resentment with this person or I'm holding and harboring anger. Um, then you can start to work through those things 
And I do suggest working through them with someone um, that is a trained, you know, a therapist that you can work through that with someone. So let me answer some of your other questions here. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions about this? Like, I want you to be in tune with your body, with, um, and, and know your breast tissue. Yes. You know, I could talk about, give yourself an exam, right? We know all those things, right? But for me, I'm just going to speak personally. Like I know my breast tissue is, feels really healthy from like May until October, November, when November hits, it's cold. And I know I hunch my body up. I hate the cold. I love warmth. I fear my wood stove. Like I don't like my wood stove. I, and it's, it's something that's an ongoing issue that I'm working through. Like I fear fire. And it, what is that? What's that fear? So work through those fears. Like when in the season of your life, are you, when is your breast tissue more tender? When does it hurt? That is not normal. We're told as women that that's normal and it's not normal to have tender breasts. It's not, it's not like to have painful breasts where no one can touch you. That is not normal. So I want you ladies to know that. Um, and, and get to some of those root causes that we talked about tonight. If you have any other questions, I know it's almost nine o'clock and I could probably keep going. Um, please feel free to reach out to me and I can help walk you through any of those areas. It was so nice seeing you tonight. Thank you all for being here. I'm going to say good night to you. And next week, Katie Smith is going to be bringing it all about parasites part one. So if you like gross things, if you don't get grossed out, or if you're, if you want to know truth about like parasites come next Monday night, um, it won't be recorded. You will want to be here. Parasites are real, like crazy stuff. Okay. So come next Monday night. All right. See you guys later. Good night. Thanks for being here.